A wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the idea behind central supermassive black holes in various galaxies. And specifically the idea behind do all massive galaxies contain central black holes or other galaxies out there that don't actually have them for one reason or another. And while the answer to that last question seems to be, yeah, some galaxies don't seem to have black holes, and we're not entirely sure why. And so in this video, we're going to briefly discuss some of the known galaxies very large galaxies that don't contain any central black holes, briefly discuss why they don't seem to have them, and more importantly, discuss one such galaxy, Messier 83, that scientists always believed contained no black hole, but turned out to have one after all, with this recently discovered and confirmed using recent observations with the James Webb Space Telescope. And so let's discuss this idea in a little bit more detail, but first start with the explanation for why we generally think most galaxies should have something in the center such as some kind of a black hole. And this is actually a combination of factors. Based on the galactic formation theories, today's belief that a lot of gas very likely collapsed under its own gravity and possibly formed something massive in the center of most galaxies. And then around the central point, a lot of additional gas started to form larger and larger structures. And in some cases, some massive black holes possibly formed as a result of a collapse of really massive stars, and then as they merged over time, became larger and larger, eventually becoming supermassive. But the main reason why most galaxies seem to have so much mass in the center, and it's not just the black hole, but also a lot of stars and a lot of gas in general, is really just the result of gas buildup. A slow, continuous accumulation of matter in the center of a galaxy, basically the result of gravity. And although here dark matter also plays a role, it mostly works as a kind of a halo, which then concentrates material during galactic formation, forcing quite a lot of it to concentrate in the center. And so, as a result of these galactic formation theories, it's always been expected that we should have central black holes in most galaxies. Which so far has been basically true. Most galaxies observed so far, especially large galaxies, seem to contain supermassive black holes. And though not all smaller galaxies do, even small galaxies sometimes contain some kind of an intermediate mass black hole. As a matter of fact, not so long ago, we've discussed a discovery coming from the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud that also seems to contain some kind of a black hole that seems to be shooting out all of these fast-moving stars toward us. But over the years, there have been some examples where galaxies were really massive, but they actually showed no signs of central black hole activity, and in some cases their black hole was actually missing. One of the best examples, and also one of the largest galaxies known to us, is right here, Abel 2261 BCG, Bright Central Galaxy. This is actually a really massive and really large elliptical galaxy, and normally all of these contain really massive black holes, very often at least 0.1% of the mass of the entire galaxy, but this galaxy does not seem to contain anything. It seems to essentially contain a kind of a poofy core without a central black hole, possibly implying that this black hole was essentially lost a long time ago. Very likely the result of gravitational interaction with another black hole or with something else really massive that eventually made it leave the galaxy, turning it into a traveling supermassive black hole. Or I guess a rogue supermassive black hole. The concept we briefly discussed in one of the videos in the description. And so, in large galaxies where we usually don't see black holes, that's usually one of the main explanations. A black hole basically left, usually through gravitational interactions. But this ejection process is not always the only explanation. And here's the best example where this doesn't seem to apply. This is actually our neighbor, the Triangulum Galaxy, also known as M33. A spiral galaxy just over 2.5 million light years away from us that also does not seem to contain a central supermassive black hole. We know that its neighbor, the Andromeda, definitely does, and there the black hole is actually pretty massive, but here years after years and decades after decades, nothing so far has been discovered. This galaxy seems to contain an abundant star formation, quite a lot of activity in the center, but its bulge, its central region, has a very low velocity dispersion, suggesting there is really nothing supermassive inside. Basically here, by observing the motion of stars in the center, researchers usually can work out if something really massive in the center causes stars to move unusually, or if it makes stars move too fast. This was not the case for the Triangulum Galaxy. And even though this galaxy is expected to have something very similar to the Milky Way, possibly 0.001% of the mass of the galaxy, it really seems to have nothing. But then there was always M83, 
The third example, not so far away from us, that scientists always thought also does not contain a central black hole. And that's of course the beautiful spiral galaxy you see right here. And M83 is a very well-known galaxy. It's actually sometimes referred to as the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy, because it does resemble the Pinwheel Galaxy so much. As you can see from this image, this is a bar spiral galaxy, extremely similar to what we think Milky Way looks like as well. And so as a result, because it has very similar structures, it's sort of expected to be similar to the Andromeda and to the Milky Way. Yet this galaxy always contained this very bizarre enigma. For decades, nobody could explain why there seemed to be no major emissions from the center and why there were no signs of potential supermassive black hole. Despite the fact that this galaxy was also quite active, just like Triangulum, and was technically a starburst galaxy. For example, in this image you can see that a lot of these red spots, these are star forming regions that seem to form way more new stars than in the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, one of the recent mysteries was that a lot of these stars seem to form in regions nobody expected. Many of them seem to form extremely far from the center, as far as 70 light years from the central galactic region. And here it shouldn't actually have any material to form stars, yet somehow these stars seem to form. And for many years, one of the explanations for both the star activity and possibly the lack of central black hole was basically blamed on this galaxy, a relatively large dwarf galaxy nearby known as NGC 5253. Here's a really beautiful image of this galaxy taken by the Hubble a few years back. And well here the explanation was that maybe, a long time ago, these two galaxies interacted directly, forcing both to become active in terms of star formation, but also forcing M83 to maybe lose its black hole. Or at least that's the explanation that made the most sense back then. But everything basically changed once we observed this galaxy with the James Webb. By observing this with the infrared light and by seeing things researchers have never seen before, it now became clear that this black hole is just maybe a little bit different, but it is there after all. In other words, M83 seems to contain a central black hole, and the black hole in this case seems to produce occasional emissions. In other words, here James Webb was able to show us that it's possible for this telescope to see things that were previously completely invisible. Uncovering hidden structures inside galaxies, but more importantly, uncovering black holes that we previously could not find. And so by using recent observations from the James Webb, researchers confirmed the evidence for this missing supermassive black hole that now seems to be in exactly the same spot as it should be and as it was expected to be, right in the heart of the galaxy. But all of this was revealed in a completely new way. And so in this new study, Svea Hernandez and the team you see right here were able to detect very specific emissions that would be very difficult to explain unless it was a black hole by essentially detecting highly ionized neon gas that seemed to be in a very specific location, sort of following the outline of a typical galactic jet, or the central black hole jet that we often expect from active galaxies. Now here this was actually clumps of gas, extremely close to the galactic nucleus, but it was so highly ionized and so energetic that we actually don't know of any natural process that could make this gas glow so much. Basically here, even if this was a supernova, or even a bunch of supernova, this gas would not be so highly ionized. The energy required for this ionization was just too extreme. And as a result, scientists now think that this is basically the result of previous black hole activity from the active galactic nucleus that possibly occurred thousands if not millions of years ago. With the location of this ionized gas suggesting that it was affected by the radiation cone from the central supermassive black hole. In other words, as the black hole became active and as it started spewing out a lot of energy, this powerful black hole jet created a massive ionization cloud that spread from the center, eventually stopping when the black hole stopped being active. And right now this is maybe the best explanation we have. But obviously not the only explanation. There are some alternative scenarios that also make sense. For example, this could also be the result of some kind of an extreme shockwave, possibly the result of a collision with a galaxy, or some other process we still don't understand. In other words, what this shows us is that something really extreme and super energetic happened in this galaxy, leaving this very powerful ionized gas behind. And although a central black hole is still the best explanation, there is also maybe something else to consider and something we've discussed not so long ago. There was actually a really intriguing discovery coming from the Milky Way galaxy of a highly ionized gas that actually didn't make much sense at first. You can learn about this in one of the videos in the description, 
but in essence, this was suggested to be the sign of, maybe, dark matter. Or at least a specific type of dark matter that seems to create extra ionization and gives the central region just a little bit more energy. But for this galaxy this might not be the best explanation, just because the amount of energy and ionization in this galaxy is way higher. It's incomparable to what's detected in the Milky Way. And the central black hole is still the best and possibly the easiest explanation. Basically confirming that in some cases, central black holes are just somewhat difficult to find and can only be detected through residual energy or residual activity that happened millions of years ago. Or at least that's the explanation for now. We'll definitely discuss this more in some of the future videos because the mystery of these missing central black holes is definitely intriguing. But I'm specifically curious to find out what similar observations might reveal in the famous Triangulum Galaxy where there seems to be no explanation for why there is no central black hole. And so on that note, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about science, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.